So this is a follow-up video. It arguably should have been the first video, but we're going to take apart this 1985 115 V4 uh, midsection, and we're going to chop it. <clears throat> so I ended up taking six inches out of this midsection. You're going to see the very simple fixtures that I built to shorten these midsections. The fixtures that I built work on the V4, V6, 1.7 liter and the 2.6 liter and also works on the 3.1, 3.3 liter um, HPDI and AUX66. And then I have a second top plate that I designed and built to shorten the uh, 250 SHO with the 4.2 liter uh, four stroke on it. So you're gonna see this fixture. It's pretty simple. Some half inch aluminum plate, some one and a half inch solid stock. I used a lathe to drill and tap and cut everything to the appropriate dimensions. So we bolt everything together, bolt the top plate on, <clears throat> clamp everything down tight, and then I take these long uprights back out, and the top and bottom plates never get removed from the midsection until it's completely welded on the outside in order to keep everything aligned. So I'm just using a couple of framing squares, um, some clamps and a Sharpie to draw a couple lines on this thing. It'll just be rough cut lines. Um, gonna take six inches out of it, same as that HPDI mid. Are there probably better ways to mark this thing out? Yeah, but um, for what we're doing here, this works just fine. I mean, you could go granite surface plate and a height gauge and all kinds of things. Um, since I've done these two videos, I have got my mill uh, up and running. So in the future, when I do them, they'll get rough cut and then uh, stuck in the mill and fly cut. However, the way I do do it in this video, just using hand tools, in my opinion, is totally acceptable. Your fixtures are going to hold everything square. Um, you have to deck them top and bottom after anyways, because they do warp when you weld them. So if you're just careful with your um, cut and fit up, grinding and fitting, then there's no reason this won't work. So here you see I start cutting with a uh, angle grinder and then switch to the skill saw. Skill saw is faster, um, but a little bit less precise. In hindsight on this one, I should have just stayed with the skill saw or with the uh, grinder. Sorry, I did end up making a slight error when I cut this. I cut on the wrong side of one of my sharpie lines, so I ended up with a fit up that was just a little bit looser than I would have liked, but. Uh, in the end, it's fine. So here, this is the midsection back in the fixture. Uh, swapped out to the shorter uprights to hold it in position while I weld it. <clears throat> Midsection's been cleaned up, beveled, wiped down with acetone, and we're gonna get ready to weld it here. Due to the shape of it, you get some gaps that have to be filled, and that's unavoidable. Um, you do end up with the whole unit shrinking slightly after welding. So here's a video tacking this thing together, getting ready to weld it out on the outside. I'm running the welder pretty hot, um, 200, 200 plus amps. I use the foot pedal to manipulate the amperage a lot. We're running an eight inch tungsten with a 332nd 4043 filler rod. As I mentioned earlier, due to the shape of these parts, you always end up with some gaps that need to be filled. Unfortunately, I did cut this a little bit on the loose side in terms of fit up, so the gaps are a little bit bigger than ideal, but it's certainly not a problem. Had it been a problem, I could have just cut the midsection a little bit shorter and worked it that way. So here we are transitioning to welding the inside. You can see I've taken the top plate off 
and I've bolted on <clears throat> like an angle iron cage, we'll call it. Um, that's just to hold the top from moving, like uh, pulling open. And then you'd have problems with your mounting holes and locating dowels. So if you go to do this, I highly recommend you come up with a way to hold the top while you weld the inside. Um, took an extra couple passes, but it's welded now inside and out. Um, this gap is unavoidable. There's a couple things you can do. On the previous one that I did, I took a piece that I cut out and blended it out here so it looked factory. This one, I think I'm gonna send the exhaust down little channels and out tiny little um, holes that are facing out the back here. Um, that will be determined with the help of some cardboard aided design at a later date. So I got a little bit ahead of myself um, before I started working on the exhaust snout. I welded some um, plates to the inside to kind of bridge the seam. So here we are, um, just threw the port band in the vise with, uh, by clamping it to the battery. Probably not the safest way to do it, but I've had no issues so far. And <clears throat> ripped out a couple of plates, cleaned them up on the sander, and uh, cleaning up some welds, and then we're going to clamp them in here <clears throat> and get this, these plates welded in to bridge the uh, weld seam. Cleaning everything up with a die grinder, a sanding drum, and a bit of acetone just to get it cleaned up before we start welding these uh, these plates back in. So I'm just welding in the uh, interior side plates or the bridge plates, fish plates, got a ton of names. Anyway, um, they're eighth inch 50, 52, I believe. Um, you can see I'm using a bunch of different long reach uh, vice grips um, and kind of welding it in and bending it into position as I go <clears throat> to try to get that fit up as good as I can. Um, there's no room to swing a hammer in there, nor do I really want to beat on the cast um, midsection itself with a hammer might crack or something. that I'm shooting for. I'm gonna have two little um, exhaust outlets, one on each side, pointing down. Now the back, trying to keep this kind of sleek looking. It's maybe something you don't notice. Um, and so hopefully it's on its way by. <clears throat> so anyway, you'll see here we are just playing the cardboard aided design game. Draw some things, cut some things, rinse, repeat. Um, I had an idea as to what I wanted to do. Like I just kind of sketched out on the side of the, the midsection there. This did take, I think you'll see like three, maybe four iterations of cardboard cutting. Um, whatever, it's cheap, it's easy. So I'm not gonna try to take credit for this exhaust design. I've seen it on one other Yamaha. There was a gentleman named Jeff built a, or was building a V6 behind the liner drag motor. Um, with a midsection that had a similar exhaust relief. I'm not sure if uh, Jeff ever got that boat and motor finished. It would have been a pretty sweet rig from the few pictures that I saw of it.
I ended up drilling a two inch, maybe it was two and one eighth inch hole in the back of the uh, midsection here for the exhaust relief. Um, I'm hoping that it's not a full exhaust relief. I would like some exhaust to still make it out past the propeller on hole shot so I can slip up uh, a taller prop and get it uh, up and moving. I know my previous V4 motor, um, after I ported it and whatnot, I lost enough bottom end that uh, it's a bit of a dog off the bottom coming out of the hole. Runs pretty good up top, um, pushing the full interior Viper to almost 80 miles an hour, 77 I think so far. Um, got a few more props to try out. I'd like to get that boat to 80. Um, it's a ton of fun and the little motor's cool, sounds cool. Okay, so at this point, I've got this, I don't know, 75% roughed in. <clears throat> All right, the exhaust is gonna come out that gap there. <clears throat> I don't know why I got excited and over, like heavily tacked this like I did. For some reason, I didn't think I was cutting it back off so I can weld the inside, hammer on it a little bit. But anyway, I'll cut it off now, weld the inside. Weld it back on again. So here's that V4, it's all welded out, getting ready to go to the machine shop. Then it gets sanded, then the bodywork begins, get everything straightened up and true, and uh, get it ready for paint. So working on both uh, midsections at the same time, that's the HPDI midsection there. Um, just using uh, flap wheels on a seven inch and four inch angle grinder, just uh, knocking the welds down, um, radiusing and grinding out the edges on the top side. Uh, eventually I switch over to uh, some 40 grit sandpaper on a DA or random orbit um, sander, uh, clean it up a little bit more, get everything ready for body filler. So I'm sure a bunch of you have noticed as I've gone through these that um, like the exhaust out opening on that V4 is a little bit crooked and the V6 um, is also needs a little bit of work. I'm very aware of that. That'll get cleaned up and sorted out um, as I body fill and continue to work on these. Um, they'll definitely be pretty much perfect or as perfect as I can get them anyways um, before they get painted. Speaking of body filler and getting things perfect, if anybody knows if uh, planging hammers and English wheels work on 8th inch and 3 16 aluminum, let me know. And now we're just going to start body filler work. Um, 
know if you can see this. I'm just using metal to metal. It's aluminum reinforced. It's worked well so far. I haven't had anything pop or crack or carry on like that. Polyester based because you just use um, MEKP hardener. Um, yeah, like I was saying, I've had good luck with it so far. So that's what we're going to keep using. So just applying uh, some of that body filler here. Because it's polyester, maybe vinyl ester based, um, you can't put it on super thick like you can get away with some of the slow set epoxies. So it does go on in a few, probably a few extra layers, but bright side is it hardens up way faster. And then knock it down, scuff it up, clean it, and uh, put another coat on. So I've made a ton more progress since this video was taken. Um, I switched to working on my boat hull, and these are sitting on a locker in my garage. You'll notice a block in the background. I am going to do a video on engine porting, um, that 3.3 Yamaha, and then eventually the, the V4. I'm not an expert at that. I've done enough of it to probably make a mess and do a bad job explaining it. But um, yeah, if you care, pay attention for that.